In political theory, the horseshoe theory asserts that the far left and the far right rather been at opposite and opposing ends of a line of political continuum. In fact, closely resemble one another, much like the ends of a horseshoe. The theory is attributed to a French writer, Jean-Pierre Fay, writes the theory point to a number of similarities between the far left and the far right. The horseshoe theory competes with the conventional line of left right continuum system as well as the various multi-dimensional systems. The horseshoe theory has been criticized not just by people on both ends of the political spectrum who oppose being grouped with they consider to be their polar opposites, but also by those who see horseshoe theory as oversimplifying political ideologies and as ignoring fundamental differences between them. For the left, the problem with globalization is that it has given free reign to capital and entrenched economic and political equality. The solution is therefore to place constraints on capital and or to allow people to have the same freedom of movement currently given to capital, goods and services. They want an alternative globalization. For the right, the problem with globalization is that it has supposedly traditional homogeneous cultural and ethnic communities, their solution is therefore to reverse globalization, protecting national capital and further restrictions on the movement of the people. The terms left and right appeared during the French Revolution of 1789 when members of the National Assembly divided into supporters of the King to the President's right and supporters of the Revolution to his left. One deputy, the Baron de Gaville, explained, We began to recognize each other, those who were loyal to religion, and the King took up positions to the right of the chair so as to avoid the shouts, oaths and indecencies that enjoyed free reign in the opposing camp. However, the right opposed the seating arrangement because they believed that deputies should support private or general interest but should not form factions or political parties. The contemporary press occasionally used the left and right to refer the opposing sides. The right is always the party sector associated with the interests of the upper or dominant classes. The left, the sector express of lower classes, and the center, that of middle classes. Historically, this criterion seems acceptable. The conservative right has defended entrenched wealth, privileges, and powers. The left has attacked them. The right has been more favorable to the position of privilege and wealth. The left has fought for equalization of advantage or of opportunity for the claims of the less advantaged. Defense and attack have met under democratic conditions, not in the name of class, but in the name of principle. But the opposing principles have broadly corresponded to the interests of different classes. Generally, the left wing is categorized by an emphasis on ideas such as freedom, equality, rights, progress, and reform, while the right wing is categorized by an emphasis on the notion such as authority, order, duty, tradition, reaction, or nationalism. And I, 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 I'm still quite good health and uh, I'm looking forward for the rest of the life to, to, to continue uh, with my activities. Political science and other analysts regard the left as including anarchists, communists, socialists, democratic socialists, left, 
libertarians, progressive and social liberals. Movements for radical equality and trade unionism have also been associated with the left. Political scientists and other analysts regard their right as including Christian Democrats, conservative right libertarians, neoconservatives, imperialists, fascists and traditionalists. When I met a couple of tourists from a well-known Western country, and then the husband stopped and said, Mr. Mandela, I said, well, many people mistake me for that chap. <clears throat> and he said, uh, would I be entitled also to mistake you for that chap? I say, well, you'll be doing what many people do. He then turned to his wife and said, darling, Mr. Mandela. She was completely unimpressed. <laughs> and she said, uh, what is he famous for? I never thought I would see the end of apartheid in my lifetime. I did not think that it would happen. How did we avoid continuing to the point where we did not care whether we destroyed all life? We went to jail. We went to exile. We became maimed because we didn't want Africans. It's, Africans it was, was not something to die for. What was there to die for was the country. Africans became a spark.